Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to illustrate the function is numeric. And I'm not a big fan of writing a program to show you something because it's kind of unrelated, but I'm going to do it just so you can see where this whole thing's coming from. I've got a form. I'm going to ask the user to enter a number. That text box is called text number. Uh, that's called text output. Anyways, you're going to enter a number. If your number is less than 10, I'm going to say good, otherwise bad, right? I don't I don't really know what this program does, but that's what it does. So I'm going to double click on this button. I need to get the information from that input box. So I need a variable for that. So dim my num as let's just say it's an integer, I guess. equals I got to know the name of that text box. It was text number this should throw an error, right? Because this is an integer, this is this is a string, so I need to do a C int there. Okay, so at this point I have stripped the information in off of the form. I got that and it's now called my number. Now, like I said, I want to display some output, so I'm gonna to have to do an if. Right, so here I'm just doing all these concepts at once, and that's okay. Let's say if if my num is greater than 10. I don't know what I said this program is going to do, but it's going to say uh, txt output dot text equals bad job. Um, else it's going to say txt. I realize I completely have forgotten what I said this thing was going to do. All right. So what I've written is a line here which is going to grab the input from the form. Uh, here it's going to say if the number is greater than 10, it's bad, else it's good. I'm not really trying to talk about that here, but it is a pretty simple example if you want to see what an if looks like. I put in 6. Good choice, right? Awesome. 10. Good choice. But when I do 10, let's make that 12, it's a bad choice. So what I really want to get at here is fine, this program does what it's supposed to do. This is a good example of an introductory program. But the problem with this is if you do something like uh, 1, right? It's a good choice. It's, it's less than 10, but it's not a number at all. In other words, it can't be converted to an integer, I guess. If you look at this thing, it crashes. I say OK. Highlights where it crashed. Uh, it crashed here on the C int. I was trying to convert a word into an integer, and that's just not going to happen. Now, of course, that crashes it. I mean, if you've got a user entering garbage in a form, there's only so much you can do to stop it. But what's a little more annoying is uh, you, when you're going to be debugging and testing your code, oftentimes I'll just accidentally put nothing in there, which is a null, and it crashes there as well. So apparently it can't convert nothing into an integer. You would think it probably just would convert it into a zero, but it doesn't. So what can we do to stop the user from crashing our program? Well, the first thing we have to do is we realize this is a text box. We could use a mask, but that's not really a good solution to stop the user from entering non-numeric data. Realize that the program crashes right here. It crashes when you try and convert it to an integer. So what we have to do is stop the program from getting to that point. So I'm going to change the structure of things a bit. Ooh, I don't know if that was a good idea. I'll say if, uh, yeah, I'm really being kind of lazy here. So if, and here's my function, is numeric, then something. And so this is how I test this. In other words, the input to this function is whatever is entered in that text box right there. If it is numeric, then basically proceed with the program and if and else something right like throw up an error message and where this gets to be kind of a complex example in some ways is the way I'm going to implement this I'm going to go with a nested if I'm going to cut this I paste it in here right in other words this was my program that I had functioning like a minute ago two minutes ago we're only going to reach this part of the program if uh, this ends up being true and if this makes you feel better is numeric is a boolean function so it either returns true or false that means whatever's in that text box is true and we can stop our program from crashing but also like i said we got to restructure things so i've got this my num well guess what remember where i had that assignment right here i now i don't so 
really that needs to go in here. So my num equals txt number. Oops. And here is where I'm going to need. Remember that cint was really the root of all our problems. And so I go through this and I realize I've got an if, I've got an nested if, I've got data conversions. Um, kind of a lot of things going on, but really if you're going to be using an is numeric, you're going to be do, doing something along those lines. You don't have to have a nested if, but that's the most straightforward way. Now let's run this thing and see how it goes. So I do a number like 1, and that's a good choice. And I do something like 11, and that's a bad choice. And now I right, I just, I'm not so smart, right? I do things like this. Just, uh, it doesn't crash. I was kind of lazy. I probably should have cleared that text box over and over again. Nothing's happening because what's happening is it's going here. It's failing this condition right here, right? It's false and there is no else really. So if I want to do this thing right, I would probably do this and then a message box saying uh, enter a number. This is better. Now I have an else on my if. And now if I do something stupid, you're going to see it a little better, right? Enter a number. I get a message box popping up. And essentially, that's an is numeric. And uh, so you might be wondering what passes an is numeric and what does not. Well, um, numbers pass an is numeric. And I guess the it's kind of a recursive definition, I guess you could say, is if the value can be converted to a double or an integer, it will pass. There's some weird stuff you can get through in his numeric, but you also have seen, well, I guess maybe you haven't, but it also solves this issue of oftentimes I'll just forget to put a value in there. And it's kind of nice that my whole form doesn't crash. So really a nice little solution. Is numeric's pretty robust. Uh, we could improve upon it. And uh, if I was making really producing something, maybe I would. But uh, as far as guaranteeing that the user enters something which we can convert into a number, it does a really good job of that. So kind of a lengthy video for a single function, but this function has a lot of implications and uh, you're going to be using it a lot. So hopefully this helped you out. Thanks for watching.